So a year ago on September 13th, I released this. This is Hal Phonics, my debut album. The first album that I had ever fully written and put vocals on and done the whole nine yards. And I thought it'd be cool to look back and kind of just review the album a year later. But when I was going back through and listening to it for the first time in, like I said, over a year, because I don't usually listen to my own stuff after it gets out because I've been editing it for so long, I'm actually really satisfied with the way it turned out. There are obviously a lot of sort of production issues that I noticed, but in general, I was really proud of the concept even, you know, months later, and I thought it would be cool to rank the songs from worst to best. One thing to note about this list is two tracks on the album, the two singles, Make Up Your Mind and Mixed Emotions, aren't included in the ranking because I think they were pretty much the best. We're going to skip those. At the bottom of the list at number 10 is my song Sentimental. So it's actually a little bit weird because this is the album intro and you think it would be higher up on the list, especially because that's what's supposed to hook people in. I think in theory, the concept of the song was really good. The vocals could have been done a lot better and the tempo was off, including stuff in the instrumental that I could have fixed. A lot of people actually really liked it for the message, which I guess is kind of like the bulk importance of music, but I'm keeping it at the bottom because it could have been done a lot better. In my opinion, the best part of the song is 39 seconds in when you had that sort of horn thing go in. Now that I'm grown, see, I couldn't care more. And then the lines, here I am ready to take on the world with my words. Here I am ready to take on the world with my words. I just thought that was clever being a musician. I'm like, oh, I'm coming for you with my debut album, which I horribly ranked. <laughs> years later. Working up the list at number nine is my song Sugar Coated. This was actually one of the first songs I had finished off of the album. You can tell that at the time of making it, there was a lot of Post Malone influence. There was, a, I call it the rock star snare. But the snare that's used basically throughout the track is really, really common in pop music these days. I think looking back, I could have just done a lot more in terms of just filling in the song. It's a little bit hollow and there could have been more layers, both in terms of the vocals, the instrumental, but it's a little bit of an angsty look at the music industry and one of the first times I really got screwed over by somebody. My favorite part of this song is at 207, when I just come in with those vocals. It's just like strong and powerful. Yes, I know that I seem crazy and I'm too gone, but you profit off me, you rob me for like too long. The second I recorded that, I was like, yep, this is staying on the track. I do that with a lot of the, uh, songs that I write is usually a couple of the lines are basically just one-offs and then the rest take like 50 takes, so it's cool. Number eight on the list is the song Tragedy. It was one of the ones I was most excited about on the album, but I think in general, what I could have done is probably have put in a little bit more effort. I was really excited when I wrote the track. I think lyrically it's really strong, but the vocals could have been done a little bit more cohesively. For me, there are a lot of parts that I had to meld together because some of them were just really vocally taxing at the time. In general, you can't really tell, and I still can't really tell. Like I'm somebody who's very picky in the mix about things, but eventually, like months later, I'll go back and listen and don't remember what I was being picky about. So that's just my own perfectionism. When I went back and listened to the album to plan the video, I did find myself really appreciating the track, which I think was important. Obviously, I had my problems with it, but in general, still really proud of that song. I think it's just for an early stages track, I think uh, it was pretty good, still a jam. I think the best part about the song is just the chorus. Mistakes I'll make and I'm okay with that. It would be tragic if we backed away before this happens. So that's everything from the way that the lyrics flow and just the way that it sounds, very lighthearted and fun. And that was really what I was going for when I was writing it, so good job to myself. Moving up to number seven, I don't know if I've been saying the numbers or not. At number seven is Never Ever. When I first finished this instrumental, I was so excited. I had something that I was really like, yes, this is great. I love the sweeping intro, which I actually kind of do a lot now. I think this is sort of the staple for me doing that fade in whatever attack. I just think in total instrumental wise, really strong track. I like the way that I sort of built it and I love the way that the drop sounds with that sort of heavier saw synth. In terms of vocals, the first verse is actually one of the first things I ever recorded for the song as a concept. I think there's something about it where if you're sitting in a studio or you're just working on a demo, sometimes the first recordings off the bat is the best because you're not really trying so I stuck with it. My biggest beef with the song is that sort of singy rap part in the middle. I just don't like the way that I did the layering. I think in general, it was a good concept, but could have been executed better. Uh, so there is a yoga class going on outside of my window. I don't know if you can hear it, but if you can, namaste. Best part never ever, 57 seconds in. And it's just too basic. basic. Yeah, I wasted time since I don't value my I can figure out mine. 
and it repeats throughout the song, but it's really that full-fledged like beat comes in and the vocals sounded really tight. So in general, proud of the final product. When the album first came out, that was the one I was most worried about, but a lot of people gravitated towards it, so. Good job, me. Coming in at number six is Dare to Be. It was actually originally written for a commercial. I had just a demo with that Dare to Be vocal line, and I had a couple friends of mine who really, really liked it and wanted me to finish it. So I basically took the whole thing, flushed it out, and the entire song was born out of that. I think I actually had it mentally lower on the list, but listening back to it, I think it was really cool. The lyrics could have been done better. I think it's a little bit corny. Maybe that fits in with the whole empowering, like, fight for your rights. That's not right. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I guess, I don't know. It was supposed to be a very self-empowering song and I just think, you know, the ship lyrics and the whole sea imagery thing for me is a little bit of a stretch because I like to write very literally. So throwing in metaphors and stuff like that that are that direct are, or indirect? I don't know. So when you use that much imagery, I don't really vibe with it. That's just my writing style. In general, I am a fan of the way this song turned out. Vocally, it was really, really tough in that sort of last hyped up bridge thing. At two minutes, that bridge comes in and then the high part repetition, I think I hit an A flat five. Give yourself a distance so you can drown it out. No rain on the ground, fall into the crowd. Pick yourself up when they put you back down. And for me as a baritone, that's just really fucking good. So obviously Studio Magic helps me make it just that much a little more perfect. But yeah, mad respect to Dare to Be. At number five, we have Dare to Be. Hey, it's me, I'm editing. Also, I popped the zit on my head. Um, this song isn't Dare to Be. Number five is One More Night. I don't know what I was talking about. There are a lot of people who like this song. I also like this song, but it took me days worth of editing to get something that sounded relatively good. When I first released it, it was like, how are people gonna like this? Are people gonna like this? Do I even like this? Looking back on it, I like the way that it turned out. I definitely think it's worth listening to if you haven't heard it yet, because just melodically it's good. Best part at 136 with those layered vocals, obsessed. If the past is too much for you, well, you gotta let me know. Cause babe, I still got some love for you. Just wanna let you know, so keep it on the low. 240 when the bridge comes in with the slide guitar and the vocals, I still listen to that and get chills. Just one more night. Just one more night. Just one more night. I remember listening to the instrumental after I had finished it when I was on my way to go hang out with friends in Boston, and I was just shocked that I managed to put something together that sounded so good, so tropical, so just sort of warm, and it just like wraps you around, and I'm like, oh my god, I love the song. Shout out to 257 too with the layering. Do our best to make it last, shed some tears and have some laughs at the center of our past. Back. I would say it deserves a higher spot on the list, but I just like the other songs coming after this better. But in general, it's worth listening to because I really think it's underrated out of something that I've put out. Going to number four, We Look Beautiful. I think a lot of people really vibe with the song. It's one of the only upbeat songs I've ever really put out before. It was one of the most intimidating tracks that I had on the album. Just in terms of production and in terms of vocals, I was really, really nervous to perform it. It's one of the bigger songs that I've had in general and lyrically too. It was just sort of based about like a dream date. Basically everything that I'd ever romanticized about Boston was fit into the song. It's sort of like a Bruno Mars, upbeat, whatever kind of track. My favorite part of We Look Beautiful is at 244. Just the vocal run. You buy my reader, so I'll buy you a ring. It's another one of those recordings that was a one-off that I just kept as is in the track because it just fits super well and I was just so hyped about it at the time. And it still kind of stands up to it. So now we're getting into the top three. Again, leaving out Make Up Your Mind and Mixed Emotions. But these are songs that I consider really, really well produced and sort of good benchmarks for me at the time because a lot of the songs on the album were produced, I mean, it came out in 2019. Some of these songs were produced in 2017, 2018, I think one or two in 2016. So there is like a three or four year history now at this point on the songs. There's been a lot of artistic growth and I think the top three really show that. At number three is Black Death. Really, really deep song. Probably the most advanced I've ever gotten in terms of lyrics 
everything for the most part means something. If you look it up on Genius, the entire song is basically annotated except for where it repeats. But just in terms of the mix and the layering on the vocals and the vocal effects, it just came together really, really well and exactly how I pictured it in my head. It was one of those songs that I almost kind of gave up on, but pushed through because of the memories of the people it was kind of written about that I was just like, all right, I gotta just finish this up, make sure it happens. A stylistic choice in there too is that bridge towards the end. I intentionally left empty because I just wanted it to be sort of like a reflective moment in the song. And I think that silence in terms of music is very understated, especially for me coming from a pop and EDM standpoint, less so EDM, but more so in pop, I think people are tempted to just put lyrics in everything and fit in as much as they can. So there's no dead space or again, instrumental space. And this is what got me to kind of break out of that mindset. I was just like, I can use this and not have to force more words into here because it's already really heavy. So the best part for me is at 159 and it repeats to the song, but that's just the convergence of all the layers. I see the lights when I'm flying oh so far away. Would it be right if I lied at all just snap this way? This is the hook or the chorus, depending on whatever. I don't really know, <laughs> but it's just all the elements coming together, building the best part of the track for me. Hopefully the lighting's better, by the way. I'm getting more into the camera settings thing. I have a giant breakout going on just like here. So I know that this is probably like here, but it's cool. I'll figure it out. Anyway, we're here for the music, so. At number two, we have Lights Out. This is one of the earliest tracks that was ever finished. This was a single planned way before I even had the album planned. But eventually when I started working on the album, I hadn't released the track yet and it was basically done. So I was like, cool, it's gonna go on the album. For me, it's surprising too that this is so high on the list, not because I don't know what the song is, but because of how early on I had written it and recorded it. Lights Out is another example of one of those first verse never ever situations where it just sounded so good off the bat that I kept it. The challenge for me was going back a couple years later and having to EQ the new recordings with the new mic to make sure that everything matched. In terms of production, I really love the bass. I just love the drums, just the flow of everything and the tropical elements, the pianos, the electric pianos, the slide guitars, everything really converged well for me. And lyrically, just the flows and the concepts, I was really just like, yes, this is what it's about. It was actually originally supposed to be the album intro, but I felt like I needed something that was more like a time capsule song at the beginning, which is why Sentimental is there. For me, the best part of Lights Out is 31 seconds in. Damn. I'll hate to see the day when we lose human connection. Our biggest worry is where we can find the best reception. I always feel guilty because my profiles are deceptive. Because I just spent some money and then everyone's receptive. It's the flow of the lyrics. It's the pacing with the instrumental. Just the rhyme scheme and everything. It took me a while to write, but when everything fit, I was so excited. It is really hard to perform live because of how fast it is, but I've practiced it enough that I can actually do it. At number one, and I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anybody because there's a music video for it, but it's Cabin Fever. So a couple reasons why Cabin Fever is at the top. One, I think just for me ranking it, it was the most recently produced on the album. It was produced, I think, two or three months before the album was put out. Vocally, I had a lot more training in terms of production. I had a lot more skill and acumen. I had a better ear for mastering. The song itself is really just a testament to how far I had come from my first releases, like The People I Love, which sound really solid still. So I ran out of storage space and realized that my monitor shut off behind me, which just goes to show that I'm getting better at not staring at myself when I'm recording things. Anyway, it's not really a surprise anyway that I'm not proud of that song because we had a whole music video for it. It's one of two videos that we've shot. We had planned plenty of other shoots, but with Cabin Fever, it was just coming from such a genuine real place that it was really easy to build a concept and shoot something for it. Again, shout out to Dave. Also, shout out to my friend Mark for shooting the album cover when he did. We shot this back in April of 2019, and weirdly enough, Joji also just released an album, and the cover looks super familiar, so... I don't know, Joji. I'm not saying that you can't have only one red-shaded album cover, but, you know, I'm just keeping an eye on that, bro. Best part for Cabin Fever for me is 21 seconds in. Say my troubles up for this one moment Going out to spend my feelings when that drum kicks in with the synth in the background that's sort of building and is filtered and just that slow clap in it, everything just kind of vibes right for me. Especially because the lyrics kind of hype you up and it's talking about going out and spending money and being reckless because you're dealing with a ton of like mental health issues. We love that. Don't actually do that. But that's why it's my favorite. It's just super real and I'm proud of it. As a basic summary, I'm really proud of the album. Could it have been done better? Yes. 
it was definitely rushed. But looking back on it a year later, I'm really proud of it just conceptually. I think there are songs on there that are definitely a higher quality than some of the others. But in general, the point gets across, and I still think that it sounds nice and is totally listenable. So hopefully by the time I get something else out, I'll be able to look back on that a year later and just be able to say, yeah, it was produced fantastically. TBD. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of my album. If we're talking about an actual review here, I'd say it's like a 7, 7.5 out of 10 just because of the production stuff. And as much as I rushed through it and was lazy about things, I am still proud of the album. Thanks for sticking through with it. The streaming link will be below. It's a year old, but you know what? If you haven't heard it yet or you just miss it, go back and give it another listen through. Think about my notes and let me know if you agree or what your favorite song is, whatever. Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.